Hello, and welcome to Module 4 of Student Organization Leadership Training. In this module, we will discuss how to spend the funding that you've received. First, let's discuss various payment types that you may use and the documentation required for those payment types. It's probably most helpful to start out with documentation type. When you submit a purchase request, regardless of the type of payment, we will be asking you for documentation. The types of documentation we may ask you for include invoices. An invoice provides a corporation or individual's name and address, itemization of goods or services being provided, and the amount due or owed by your student organization. A contract. The Center for Leadership and Involvement Engagement Agreement is linked in the Dig Deeper section of this module, and it must be signed and approved by your RSO advisor within the center. Please note, that students may not sign contracts. The W-9, which is a corporation or individual's form used for taxing purposes. This may also be found linked in the Dig Deeper section of this module. The Certificate of Compliance helps our financial operations team screen for vendors that are debarred from the university. This may also be found in the Dig Deeper section of this module. Should you choose to utilize an independent contractor they will need to fill out a questionnaire and client list. These are also available in the Dig Deeper section of this module. Lastly, there are receipts. Receipts are itemized lists that show final payment and method of payment for a purchase. Now that we've discussed documentation, let's talk about the various payment types available to your organization. First is a payment. A payment is a check that goes out for goods or services and there are certain scenarios where you will use this method of payment. For simple purchases, no services included. Simple purchases are for goods. If you're sending out a check to pay for goods, all you need is the invoice from the corporation. If you're paying for a rental or service payment to a corporation, you would need an invoice from the corporation, the corporation's W-9, and a signed certificate of compliance. As mentioned earlier, if you choose to use an individual for a rental or service payment, in addition to the invoice, W-9, and signed certificate of compliance, you would also need them to fill out an independent contract questionnaire and a client list. All of these documents are available in the Dig Deeper section of this module. If your organization is processing an honorarium for a performer or a speaker, you need to have an invoice or contract, which would be negotiated by your RSO's advisor, a W-9, and a signed certificate of compliance. Lastly, there are foreign payments. Please speak with our financial operations team in the basement of the Reynolds Club, room 003, before securing foreign services or entering into foreign contracts. They will have additional documentation that you will need to get filled out. The next major purchase type is a purchase order. Purchase orders are used to pay for goods and services directly so that you do not need to pay out of pocket. To issue a purchase order, you need a quote or an invoice from a purchase order approved vendor. The list of purchase order approved vendors is linked in the Dig Deeper section of this module. If the vendor you are hoping to use is not available on the approved vendor list, you would need to issue a payment, not a purchase order. The purchase order process is simple. First, select a vendor from the approved vendor list and then call that vendor to discuss your order. Be sure to state that you are with the University of Chicago and give your RSO's name. Ask them to fax you an invoice or quote. Submit that invoice or quote to a purchase request within Blueprint and submit. If the paperwork is in order, a purchase order will be generated and faxed to the company, at which point the approved vendor will receive the PO and fill your order. When they filled your order, they will give you a final invoice. Submit that invoice to the financial office for payment. We cannot issue payment without a final invoice. The last major payment type is probably the most common, and it is the reimbursement process. There are three main areas that you need to be aware of when doing a reimbursement. First is that you need to check that your purchase is actually reimbursable. Next, you need to fill out the purchase request form. And lastly, you need to include the required documentation. Let's discuss what kind of reimbursements are reimbursable. 
for goods including food, art materials, fabric, stamps, office supplies, and photocopying. Certain fees are reimbursable including tournament entry fees and conference registration fees. And personal travel expenses including airfare for coach only, hotel room charges, bus and cab fare, tolls, mileage for personal vehicle use, and rental cars. What is equally important to know is what kind of expenses are not reimbursable. In essence, services are not reimbursable. Some examples of services include catering, engraving, screen printing, web design, printing, bus charter, AV rental, teaching and instruction, graphic design, t-shirts, lecturing and speakers, coaching, editing, producing, film or CD duplication, banner making, musical performances, DJ services, rentals, and gift cards and gift certificates. None of these are reimbursable. When submitting a reimbursement, you need some additional documentation. This includes original printed receipts. If you have original pr printed receipts that demonstrate method of payment, this will be sufficient. If it does not show the method of payment, it is a ticket. If you have an original printed ticket that does not show your proof of payment, you will additionally need to submit a backup documentation form which has been approved by your RSO advisor and a banker credit card statement. If you've received a handwritten receipt and paid by credit card or check, you will need to submit a banker credit card statement in addition to the handwritten receipt. If you receive a handwritten receipt and you paid cash, you'll need a backup documentation form approved by your advisor and submitted along with the handwritten receipt. If you've purchased something online, you would need to submit the appropriate documentation as outlined above depending on what type of receipt you receive. Links to the backup documentation form are available in the Dig Deeper section of this module. Some tips about reimbursements. Always put the full legal name of the individual being reimbursed. Always retain your original receipts. When prompted, you will need to turn in your originals to the Financial Operations Office, not scans or photocopies. Be sure to complete the entire purchase request form. Don't leave any fields blank. For food expenses for fewer than 11 people, you must provide the full names of all people who are present. And remember, do not pay for any services or rentals out of pocket. You must do this with either a payment or a purchase order. Now that we've discussed the various types of payment and the documentation you'll need to make them happen, let's show you exactly where and how you do it within Blueprint. When you enter your RSO's portal, you'll notice the Finance tab on the left side of the page. Once you've entered the Finance tab, you'll notice a list of your previous purchase requests, when they've been approved, and their current status. You may also enter into that particular purchase request and see the details. It will also show you stage history of when things were approved and when they were submitted. Additionally, in the Finance tool, you can go to the Accounts tab. This is going to be extremely helpful in re reviewing your organization's finances. Select the account appropriate. You'll notice that your organization's account number is available. And you'll also notice balance, encumbered funds, and available funds. The balance shows what we're currently seeing in your account. This may not match your available funds if you have encumbered funds. An example would be, if we're currently showing a balance of $805, but we have $5 in encumbered funds, our available funds would actually show $800. This helps you know what is being spent in your account and what you actually have to use. Again, you'll be able to see a list of all the requests that you've submitted, and in this tab you'll be able to see your entire completed transaction history, including deposits. If we go back into the main page of the Finance tab, you'll notice a button up top that says Create Purchase Request. This is where you'll submit for the different payment types that we just talked about. 
make sure to fill out the entire form. In this example, we'll do a reimbursement. We put in a subject that tells us what the reimbursement is for. the amount that we need to be reimbursed, and a description. Be sure to select your account, and then indicate what type of payment it is. Remember, we discussed three types of payment, reimbursements, payments, and purchase orders. In this example, we're doing a reimbursement. Be sure to enter the payee's information in full, including their legal name. Include their address, where you would like the check to be mailed. And then put in information about your event and the reimbursement itself including the date of the event, the type of event, the number of people present. Remember, if this is for food, you need to include the full names of everyone if there are fewer than 11 people. The expense type, in this example, food. your university affiliation, and your contact information. Please be sure to give as much detail as you can. This is how we will contact you if we have questions or need follow-up. Remember when we talked about documentation? This is where you would need to upload your current files. It's a simple upload, and for the initial request, a digital copy is fine. But remember, retain all original receipts as you'll need to turn them in when prompted. If you file the previous report that was denied, include the original report number and give any additional information that would be helpful for us to know. From there, submit the request and you'll be able to track it. You have now reached the end of Training Module 4. Please take the quiz and then move on to Training Module 5, which is linked in the Dig Deeper section of this module.